Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hukalo TV, located at www.humancolony.org. Today's date is August 8th, 2015, the Gateway Day. Um, today's guest channelers are Kim Louise and Roxanne Swainhart. Both are here. Um, we also have uh, Alex with us, and Barbara, and Casey, and David and Johannes. Sarah is helping me today. Matt. Matt Tumatu, Matt. And Pearl. Oh, she's on the side. Pearl on the side. Awesomeness. Awesomeness. Uh, Jim's not here today. And Sabrina's not here today. And Rowie's not here today. So this is on us. Yes. Um, I'd like to take a moment to mention um, Sessions with Kim. Sessions with Kim, uh, her information can be found at uh, www.humancolony.org slash private sessions, well, private hyphen sessions hyphen with hyphen Kim slash. <clears throat> and um, she's offering a 25% uh, discount for the month of August. Roxy's private sessions, her information can be found at HTTP dot backslash backslash Roxanne CD so R O X A N N E C D dot Wix W I X dot com slash Odyssey hash mark exclamation services slash C twenty four S O and these links can be found on the webinar event page for today. They are posted there where everyone can see them. Um, oh, hello, Karen. Karen just popped in. Oh, I didn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, you just slipped right in there. How about that? Oh, David fell out, so you popped in. Today we're going to start with Kim. Kim will be uh, channeling her beings. And then um, the second portion of the, uh, the event, uh, Roxanne will be channeling her beings. Uh, Kim, would you like to uh, to come up to the mic and say hey? Thank you, Dan. Yes. Hi, everybody. It's so exciting to be here again. Um, Jim Saucer with us, and he's up having a lovely time once more. So, yes, let us do him proud again. Um, thank you to everybody who is. Uh, showing so much support within Hugo and the community at the moment. Um, we really have some amazing things going on and lots of sharing of experiences. Um, and this is fabulous. So I encourage you all to keep on with your journeys. Um, today, Alma Talk uh, is the initial being that will come through. Perhaps he will stay, perhaps. He will bring someone else, I'm told. So um, if anybody has any questions, typically I don't take requests, but of course questions. Um, and everyone is familiar, I believe, with our talk. So um, I will just settle for a moment, um, let him come through and greet you all, uh, and have a wonderful time, and much love to everyone. I'll see you soon. Much love. Greetings. This be Alm Talk, Hukula Community. Hello. Hello, Alm Talk. Welcome. How are you today? Mm, very well, thank you, Dan. And you? I am doing very, very well. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Um, we have uh, some big things going on uh, with the yeah. group. 
amongst other things, but I think I'd like to ask firstly if um, you have any information that uh, you would like to share with everyone at this time. Yes, thank you for asking. I would like to share an experience. I have noticed that amongst you there is much talk regarding chakras. At this time, you are enrolling mostly your heart chakras and the soul plexus. I wish to draw your attention to the idea of your third eye. This is how it is most commonly known. I would like to make a distinction here around the vibration of this idea and around the perception of this idea and perhaps give you some clarity on how you may effectively understand its use and its purpose and the difference that it is in the three-dimensional realm. So there is an exercise. There is an exercise that I would ask you to do in a time when you have some privacy and your mind to be quiet. Now this exercise, I would ask you to move towards a mirror. You may visualize this with me at this point. It is effective. Please, visualize a mirror, at least where you may see your upper torso and the entirety of your head. Place your feet shoulder length apart. Be stable in your standing. Your core strength will hold you there firmly. Now, I ask you to view yourself in your mirror. I ask you to look directly into your 3D physical eyes. Spend some time looking. No movement. Looking. You may stare. You may blink. You may breathe as you choose. Become aware of the idea that you may allow your eyes to move out of focus. Your vision may become what you call blurry. Now, as humans practice this idea, there are several occurrences that are opportunities for you to learn more about yourself. This is not the directive, however, at this point I will share with you what the possibility is of what you might experience. Now, one of them would be that you may appear to have the experience that your facial features are altering. You may look differently to yourself. Your peripheral vision will also be enrolled at this point. And at this point, your subconscious becomes very active in the communication with yourself. Now, as you stand there and you peer, you may also find something very interesting within your pupils. You may look into yourself. This is an intimate moment. It is something that is understood that between each other, intimacy and eye contact are necessary. I'm asking you to become intimate with yourself, with the use of your physical 3D eyes. You understand them very well. So these experiences may occur as you stand and you look to yourself in the mirror. Now, if you are enjoying this process, please continue. Please continue. If you are exploring the idea of facial change, then you are exploring the idea of how you may appear in another lifetime. It can be a fascinating experience. And I encourage you. If you enjoy it, embrace it, repeat it. Now, I wish to take you a step further. I would like for you at this point 
to close your 3D visual eyes. Close them shut. Now, I would like you to focus on what you refer to as your third eye. Now, this be the distinction I wish to make with you. May we rename the third eye as being the altar eye. I make this definition with purpose. For your perception of the third eye is obviously not a physical experience and yet it has been named as such. So I ask you, rename it, address it as the altar eye. View upon your altar eye. Enroll it as a sense. Refer to it as a sixth sense. Understand the difference. The third eye naming is not necessarily serving any of you who are practicing with your chakras, practicing with your energies, your vibrations, your connections to source. Expecting to be able to view your 3D reality with your third eye as you do with your 3D physical eyes is unrealistic. So please, there are many who as they close their physical eyes and enroll their perception of the third eye, they expect to see a clarity as similar as your physical 3D eyes. This will not be the case. This is a spiritual experience. This is a relationship, an intimate experience with yourself. Now please refer to your altar eye. You are stood safely. You are stood balanced. Now, when you close your 3D physical eyes and you focus on your altar eye, Embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace the idea that this is actually a view of yourself. You have viewed yourself in your mirror. You have spent some time being intimate with yourself using your three dimensional tools. Now, as you address your alter eye, I would like you to become very intimate with your vibrational selves. Now, there may be the experience where typically many humans would see initially a silhouette of themselves. Now, this is also a very interesting idea. For a silhouette would appear to be what you call dark. This reflection is very effective in understanding how you encompass the light that you name the dark and the light of source. Do you see? There is nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear. This is a positive experience. Look to your world, to your silhouettes in your world as silhouettes. They are changeable. Your energy, your vibration, they are changeable. Now, there are many variables, many, many variables for each individual, for each individual belief system, for each vibration, for each you, for each resonance that you may see as you close your eyes. You may see balls of light. This be interesting. If you do have this experience, I ask you to focus on the light that you see beyond the silhouette. You will come as you relax and become aware that perhaps this light, it changes, it moves, it alternates. You're viewing yourself. 
you are creating an intimate reflection of yourself with your alter I. Now you may experience many great and vast occurrences, existences as you journey into yourself using your alter I. Look inward. Look inward. Build a relationship with your alter I. It is building a relationship with yourself. So I ask you please to practice this idea and do it regularly if you are interested in becoming more aligned with yourself, the greatness that you are, the humility with which you stand tall in your stance, you feel core strength erect, embrace all that you are for in your alter eye you, you shall see yourself. That'd be all. Thank you. That's Is wonderful. Um, yes, there's a question uh, from one of the members. Um, they say that many entities, including yourself and Buddha and Jesus, etc., have mentioned to people the need for purity. Could you yes. please share what your idea of purity means on all levels of the human experience, including sexuality? Yes. Definitely. Purity is, a, is a, an existence. It is a state of being. Being a vibrational being means that you may journey across very many variables of experience which initiates reaction, response. And in the 3D human it comes as an emotion. Now this be perfect, for emotion is why you are here. Now purity, purity comes from the idea of congruency. Now I have spoken of this before. Yes, I will repeat. Congruency, my friends. It is you in yourself, in all your realms, your connection to source, your connection to spirit your connection to self, being aligned. It is the alignment that brings the purity. It is the understanding that you resonate with source, that you draw source in with you. You carry it with you and it shines amongst you and moves and vibrates around you in joyous and wonderful ways. Now, if you have access to that, then you may very easily access your spirit realm. Your spirit realm are instantly attracted. They become aligned also in their positions around you within your etheric fields, your auric fields. There, we move into the body, the cellular body. Look to the vibration in the self. If the self is aligned, it is in a state of peace. It is in a state of neutrality and it is grounded. Now, this alignment that encompasses these dimensions is the reflection of purity. So as you come to interact in your 3D world, wishing to enroll the idea of purity, then seek this level of existence. Now you reference the idea of sexuality. This be true also as you interact so intimately with each other. For if you are both the great beings and connected to the greatness that you are, then your intimate moments together become equal they become a responsibility that you hold in your exercise of your sexual practices. You embrace each other equally. 
there is purity in every moment, the choice of you coming from a place of purity in all that you do. It is simply putting the time and the effort into yourself. As I just spoke of the altar I, enroll this process also. This be purity. You understanding yourself and coming from a place of integrity and love, respect, humility and honour, gratitude. This be purity. Wow. What an, what an awesome definition. Uh, I have a question from another member, um, Amy. Uh, she wants to know if you have any information about any hybrid children she might have, what species they might be, names, if possible. And then she has another question after that, if possible. Yes. I may not address anything that is occurring on, on the colonies at this point, specifically with DNA and the hybrid children. This is the realm of Tukur at this point. Okay. All right. Let me ask her second question. Uh, the second question is, uh, her deceased father was channeled through another channeler uh, the other day. And she wondered, in fact, if it really was him. She's just wanting validation for her peace of mind. His name was uh, Charles Carroll Blakemore. And uh, she sends many blessings and thanks, if you have any information that would help her on that. Yes. There was a connection. This, this being meant well in the effort to channel. There was a connection with her father. It was not as strong as perhaps Amy would have liked. However, he did attempt and so did the channeler to make a genuine connection. Should this be where Amy's hesitancy come from? It was not what you would call 100% an inclusive channel session though much of it was relevant. And those are the parts that she resonates with. Those are the parts that her alter eye, as she reflects on herself, she will understand she resonates with. So yes, there was content. <laughs> Thank you. Um, would you happen to have any advice for people who are trying to contact their loved ones? I know I have a little exercise that I do when I want to see uh, loved ones that have passed on. Do you have uh, another method that people could uh, could employ to uh, to do that and, and have their own connections where they can feel this uh, validation and satisfaction of connection? Yes, with spirit, correct? Yes, please, with spirit. Yes, yes. The spiritual realm. I will elaborate. The idea of source. This be the base of everything. Source is the stronghold, the foundation of all experience, all incarnate experience. It is spiritual. Now you are each spiritual beings. If you can understand, and I will reference the altar eye idea once more. If you may look to the self using your altar eye and embrace your spirit, and this be the way to do it, embrace your spirit, familiarize yourself with your spirit. Once you have been able to adapt that idea, then reaching out to the realm around you of spirit becomes far easier. Now understand that for the 3D human, the idea of spirit be a reflection of the golden light that I refer to. The golden light is the realm in which spirit moves. There is no mass. Be mindful, of course, it is obvious. However, I'm asking you to be mindful. There is no mass. 
So for you to view yourself without mass is very effective. For then you may be able to view other realms of your reality in that same way. Now this be the most direct course I would suggest because it serves several purposes for the human. Effective and efficient. Many different ideas and perspectives to view in this way. Now, yes, many channelers are able to channel spirit for the individual. The spirit that you are calling in, the spirit that you wish to contact, the spirit that you perhaps have sensed around you and would wish to address them. Now this be where the power of your subconscious and the idea of the mind is enrolled. I have encouraged you to embrace your subconscious minds. I have encouraged you to build relationships with your subconscious minds. For as you do so, you are building relationships with your spiritual realm also. Now in this idea, you may use your subconscious when you activate it. Yes, you may use your alter eye to do it and request that your subconscious bring you more awareness, bring you the ability to contact that which your mind is all knowing of, including the spirit realm. Now, to bring it even to a more simple idea, simply as you go into your sleep time, request your Self, your subconscious, speak to it, befriend it, become familiar with it, request that contact is made, request that identification is made, request that interaction is made, whatever it is that is desired. Now you may need to repeat this many, many, many times. However, it is a training process. Please understand this. Human beings, Homo sapiens, generally, it takes around 30 days. One of your moon revolutions for you to train yourself to do anything. For it to become what you would call habitual. So yes, your subconscious reacts in the same way, in the vibration, the escalation and because timeliness is an imperative part of your existence on your earth. So yes, repeat to your subconscious as you go into your dream state, make the request that you would like awareness, that you wish for more interaction. It will come. It may come as a dream time remembrance and it will be a remembrance. A visitation is very clear. You will know. So until you have those moments and then if you choose to have more, I suggest to you enroll these ways to achieve it. At this point in time, at this point in your evolution, this is the most accurate suggestions I may offer. Thank you. Thank That's you. Wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm a I'm a um, um, I'd like to ask like Kim, 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 Kim needs a drink. Mm. Mm. She's fine. She's Thank fine. She's fine. Okay. okay. Um, um, I saw I when we had a Wendy. question, but I'm not seeing where it's at. Yes, Wendy. Greetings, Wendy. Uh, Wendy's I have not... a question. I have oh, you a... haven't? Okay, go ahead, sir. Uh, Wendy would like to ask, uh, what is the importance of today, meaning the uh, 888 Lionsgate 
portal and be royal, serious, something to do with that royal, serious gate. Yes. May I simplify this? Yes, please. It is elaborate in many ideas. It has been taken upon itself and used in varying ways to be a representation of many things. Numerically, the significance of the three eights. Be aware that the eight shape in your alphabetical numerology is also the sign of infinity. Now where you have the three eights, yes, many of you will resonate with the idea that the three eights is the trilogy. The eights are not to be added, they are to be multiplied. As you multiply them, you may multiply them to infinity, for they are the symbol for infinity. Now this is where the greatness of the 888 comes from. It is a sign to the human race, to your earth, to your animal kingdom, to the realms that you are attached to, that this be a very powerful time. This one is one reason why I bring to you the idea of the altar eye at this day. It is a very effective way for it is being amplified as many times, as many multiplications of eight as you choose, even to infinity. Now you may apply this idea to whatever your free will desires. Now understand it is a very high vibrational addition to your experiences on this your day. Is that enough? Yes, thank you very much. Um, talk. I'd like to ask a question for the group. Um, the group is very dynamic and the group experiences all kinds of special energies that maybe other people are experiencing but as a group um, it experiences a lot of different and unique things and sometimes we have troubles assimilating it, you know, uh, we get downloads, we have all kinds of experiences, uh, lots of energies going on and you know I understand that we're we're moving through space very very quickly and we are in places of the galaxy that we've never been before, in frequency ranges that we've never been before, on a planet that's ascending where we get to ride and we get into all these new things and is there something that you could tell us as a group that would help us to assimilate these things or recognize them when they're going on so yeah, because they they are challenging they bring us challenges and sometimes they even you know interrupt lives and is there any wisdom that you can impart on us that would uh, help us as a group as, as hukalo to to deal with some of these things yes there's many reflections in this idea. As a group, as a whole, if you unite and use your manifestation techniques, then yes, most definitely enroll those to be supportive of each other. Now, many, and I have said this before, many come to Hukulo to complete agreements. So there are some who are coming in with very specific purpose. They may not be aware of this, so this is why they are amongst you. Now in this idea, they can be confronting to many selves. There is a juncture. There is what you would call a wall. Now the wall may be invisible or it may be solid. 
Now, who moves beyond this wall and who moves to which side of this wall and how they view this wall is individual. So your individual reactions to the energies and the experiences that are going on within the group, I am going to bring you once again back to the idea of the alter I. Within the group of Fuglo, you do remain behind your computers. You are not in your 3D reality sitting next to each other. May I reassure you, if this be the case where there was frequent, personal, as you would say, up and close contact with each other, your experiences of these energies would be completely different. Please understand that. What happens with Hukulo is much energy is focused into a very small portion of humanity. There is much to dissect. Now, where there is the case that there are many energies influencing some, influencing others, perhaps some not so productive. This is where you have the ability to assess for yourselves where it is you will travel on the journey of these energies that are moving amongst you. Remember, you are creators. Why, who and how has created this? Why, who and how has enabled this? Enabling, <coughs> excuse me, en <coughs> excuse me, enabling is a challenge. I ask you to resist any enabling where there are situations that you do not wish to be something that you choose for yourself. Do not enable it. This is your choice. You may make it an orderly journey for yourself. Not one where you are wandering through ideas, wandering through energies, wandering aimlessly. This is not effective. It does not serve the 3D human nor those in Hukulo being affected at this time. Now once again, I will say to you the greatness of yourselves. It's the greatest guide you may offer. So please understand again the distinction that is you. What is it that makes up you. What is it that makes you attracted to this particular thing and you wish to reject this one? This is choice. This is true resonance. To sort out what you speak of, of energies, perhaps chaos, become centered with yourself. Look to yourself. Do not look to the group. Each of you who are sensing this, if each of you do this, each of you carry out this idea, you look within yourself. You search inside of yourself. Which of these energies are you going to manage? Which one are you going to address and in what order? Build yourself a structure. Humans thrive on structure. Build yourself a spiritual structure of journey. This will put orderliness back into the group. It will identify areas that are not serving the group full. You will no longer be enabling them. Those that you do resonate with, you will shine your light on and therefore they will be amplified and further enabled. Understand, however, this is the choice of the individual. So I advise those in Hukulu who are feeling this kind of chaos at this time, look within yourself before 
you look to what's in front of you. This will sort out what you would call the mess. It is not something that is symbolizing the end of what you call Hublot. It is simply a shift and a time of change. It is purposeful in the reflections that it is offering you. The majority, however, are the ones that will rebuild, that will maintain, that will be the structure and the foundation and remain that way. And then the growth as if your plant life will thrive upon that. It is up to the members to manage your own energies. Be orderly. Be respectful. Understand the power and the greatness that is you and enable that which you choose. Disable that which you don't. Does that Thank answer you. Well? Thank you. That's wonderful. Uh, I notice you're having uh, a little... Uh, a little glitch with your throat. Would you like to uh, have a drink? Yes, thank you. And, and while you're doing that, I'd like to uh, share my uh, my little thing about when, I, when I'm when i missing my dad, <clears throat> I just uh, envision my dad in my mind as best I can. I kind of get into a meditative state and I'll just get very quiet and I'll try to envision my dad uh, as best as I can remember and then I just uh, tell spirit that I'd like to have a new vision of my dad through a dream state or something. It's not that I'm asking for anything, it's just that I'd like to see him again. And I do that with other loved ones, but my dad was the first one. Yes. And then usually, over the course of a couple of nights, usually I'll have a dream and my dad will be in there and he'll be playing with a fire truck or something, doing whatever he liked to do. And I go, oh, hey, you know, hey, dad, how you doing? Oh, all right. Okay, well, have fun. You know, it's not like I'm really asking for it. I just wanted to, to get a new fresh image because the fresh <laughs> image um, really serves me. It helps me to feel better, and uh, so I do that. Just that little thing, and, uh, and that really helps out quite a bit. So, so I may ask you: when you have these experiences, please be grateful, and not only be grateful to the idea of spirit of your father. Be grateful to yourself. You enabled this for you. You brought this idea to you. You made the request to make the connection. You are moving towards unification. This is the ultimate. Now, understand that your father, the one who played the role of your father in this lifetime and has been many things to you over many lifetimes and vice versa, he presents himself to you in your dream time. That's the way you remember him. Yes. This is a beautiful experience and this is something that spirit does very well and it is a wondrous gift. And yes, humans do like to envision that their loved ones are on the other side. They have passed over and they visualize them in the same shape and form and mass that they were known as when they were here with you in this lifetime. Now this also is a wonderful gift. These experiences are true gifts of themselves, gifts of spirit. But please, as you have these experiences, thank yourself and also thank the idea of your father. Yeah, thank okay. you. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yes, very good. Yes, Barbara's next. Hi there, this is Barbara Joy. Greetings, Alma Talk. Yes, Barbara, greetings. Um, for most of my life, I have, when I wake up in the morning, I uh, remember some of my dreams, or at least have a sense that I have dreamed. Yes. But for the last couple of years, I, when I wake up, I don't even feel like I've dreamed. It, it just kind of feels blank. Are you able to offer an explanation for that? Thanks. May I ask you, how long have you been on your spiritual journey to awaken? 
um, for about 25 or 30 years yes. that I've woken up to my spiritual self. Yes. Okay. So you've been practicing many of the ideas that we discuss in you flow that you share with the members of people, yes? Not as much. Ah. Barbara, if you are not addressing the idea that you are dreamless, and when I say this, I mean in a very spiritual and personal and intimate conversation to hold with yourself, with your subconscious, your mind, your subconscious. This is where your dreaming comes from. Now, in the recent last couple of years, as you mentioned, there has been a disconnect between you and your mind and your subconscious. I say this to you gently. It is not anything that you have done wrong. No. It is simply part of the journey for you to have this experience. Now, you may re-enroll your dream state realities at any time you choose. Now that you understand there is simply a disconnect that you had made between yourself, between ideas of who you are, and this be why there is less memory. You are dreaming, my friend. You are simply not remembering. So make the request to remember. Ask yourself, Speak with your subconscious and your mind where your dreams are created. And I would also, at this point, because you have been on such a vast journey for a lengthy period in your lifetime, that when the dreams do reoccur, they will bring you many messages, much happiness. For you will find you are unable to relate and see the symbolism in the dreams. Understand them. So essentially the period of you experiencing a dreamless time will expand and enhance when you do begin to remember your dreams once more. You will embellish this idea far more before you have been without and you will come to it with more knowledge. So it is a simple and gentle way for you to reconnect with your subconscious father. This is all you need to do and you will dream and remember. Is that yeah. helpful? Barbara, did you have another question? I will give the mic to the next person. Very well. Casey? Greetings, Alma Talk. Greetings, Casey. Um, I wanted to say that I do something very familiar to the mirror exercise you described. Um, yes. Instead of closing my eyes, I keep them open and I allow messages to come through. I was just wondering if I was channeling my subconscious, is it still the same intimate connection I'm making, but yeah, would it be so more it, powerful? It is an intimate connection you are making. Yeah. May I suggest this idea to you? The language you attach to these experiences is entirely your choice. If you feel it is a recurrence of channeling, then yes, please go ahead and use that language. If you feel it was, it is building a relationship with yourself, then please use that language. If you feel you are building intimacy with yourself, then please use that. The concept of what you're experiencing is entirely up to you, what you call it. So embrace it. It's wonderful and I know, I sense the joy that you get from these experiences. So embrace them. Enjoy them and do not distress too much about how it is coming to you. Simply appreciate that it is 
and if you wish to describe it to another, use the language which you truly feel deep within yourself is appropriate. It is once again about resonance with language. Thank you. And I you also have had... great experiences. Great, thank you. I also had another question. I was wondering if there are any messages for me. My friend, you know the messages for you. Okay, thank you, are you. Very, yes, you have a wonderful relationship with yourself. Thank you, that's reassuring. You're welcome. Hello, I'm a talk. Um, a lady by the name of Roxy Yates, she would like to have the same ans uh, question answered for her. Is there any messages for her? Any messages for Roxy Yates? Yes. 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 In regard to Roxy's interaction with you, Paulo, I would like to see her be a little more confident, a little less feeling as if she needs to be a f and use a form of anonymity. I feel that there is at times some frustration around reaching the group and this is understandable. I believe this to be technology. If this be the case, Roxy, may I say to you, my dear friend, you will be present where it is you are meant to be present. Now in future if you are able to improve on your ability to interact amongst the group, then that would be wonderful and I would ask you to make this a goal and also enroll the manifestation ideas. May I address here, just recently I made an elaborate channel which will be posted further through this week and I do address the idea of the everlasting, everlasting manifester. It is about how you may encompass your manifestation techniques and multiply them. So yes, I would also ask Roxy, when she is able and the channeling has been posted, to please view the channeling. This will be effective for her on many, many levels. She is searching, she is hunting, she is finding difficulty. She is reaching, reaching, reaching. It's time that you reached, my friend. Please reach. Already you have reached. That is the message I will give to Bob. Thank you, Anita. Uh, next is Timatu. Timatu. Hello. Hello, Anita. This is Timatu and Pearl speaking uh, for the first time together. <laughs> oh, lovely, Pearl. Lovely. How may I help? Uh, yes, we were curious. Uh, we've been feeling an entity around us yesterday and today. Um, mm. We were interested in learning more. Yes. <laughs> this entity, is it an experience that you have only had together? Or do yeah. you experience it when you're separate? Definitely together. Mm. Yes. May I exchange this idea with you? In spirit, you have your own individual set of spirit realm. Now when you interact closely with another who has also obviously a set of their own spiritual realm, the spiritual realms work together. So this changes the energy and the vibration that be around you. This varies depending on the intimacy of the relationship. So, as you two come together in your 3D physicality, so too does your spirit realm. Now what you are feeling is a combination of the amalgamation and melding of your spirit realm. 
to this is the energy that you are sensing at this time it may clarify it may become something more identifiable to you for well, the moment enjoy it it is supportive it is learning and it is growing this is beautiful it is very beautiful my friend bless you thank you you're welcome. Is there anything else? Thank you. And the last for you will be Johannes. Ah. Hey, Emma. And, Hello. Uh, <laughs> I have a question. I want to continue on dance uh, track there uh, on for the group. Um, yes. This this question is for the group. As everything is flowing pretty good still, I mean we we don't have difficulties so much. Maybe personal yeah. issues with some with some stuff. But as this group is also going to grow, and as we also live on this Earth planet where we have special issues with things being becoming bigger and bigger, how can the group protect or how can the group prepare? itself for the future events that will take place for this group and it will be sort of a surprise but how can we uh, prepare ourselves for for the futures group uh, for the future of the group yes firstly may I share with you my friend nothing is set in stone you may only look to probability and the reason for this is because you have free will so at any point where you feel that you might be headed towards something that does not feel ideal for you, that does not serve you, then I would say to you, please change the course of your journey. Now perhaps be this be the holistic message for the entire group. If you do sense something impending, there is complication, there is misunderstanding, there is even at times judgment and I would ask you please sit back, choose not to judge, make assessments. 3D humans have the ability to utilize the idea of assessment for a reason and it is not to impose belief systems on others. It is to assess what it is you resonate with for yourself. Now this will bring clarity. So at this point, yes, I hear you say you believe there is a probability that there is something complicated and not necessarily productive for the group in your future. I would ask you to re-identify and redefine this idea. Perhaps it will be a time of growth. It is however it is perceived. And yes, many of you are aware of this. Perhaps you are not aware of the greatness that you are and how you do have the ability to change the direction, even in a group. Again, your manifestation techniques, your relatability, your understanding, your compassion, your love, beyond your belief systems, Enroll the idea of source. Enroll the idea of connection. Now, if there needs to be dissension of some kind, separation of some kind, over a process of time, your three-dimensional time, for it takes that to be experienced, to make the division, to incorporate what resonates and what does not what is energy you wish to be amongst and what is not. Slowly this will evolve, it will be identified. There will be members that will come up with ways and means of how to utilize best the reflection that these experiences are showing you, how to manage them, how to understand them, how to put them back on course or they may choose to leave 
there is always that option also. Understand, if the majority of the group is projecting an idea, an essence of positivity, then the negative becomes the minority and the minority will slowly leave. For there is no longer a payoff for the behaviour. Humans do not do anything without there being a payoff. Be mindful of that. Again, the enabling idea. Please do not enable ideas, energies, experiences that do not resonate with you. It is a simple choice. Do not participate. So please understand the group is only as threatened as you believe it to be. Choose not to believe there is any threat. If you wish to feel projection, then please draw on Source. Source is the ultimate protector. Draw on it as golden light that you flow upon your bodies, upon yourselves, around you. Encompass those you love. Encompass your reality. Encompass the group with the light of gold. This will provide you the protection that you are referring to. But slowly, have faith. If you move to the positive, if you move to the love, if you move to source, the group will change for the better. Is that enough? Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Johan, I would like to encourage you with your projects, my friend. Please Alma Talk, uh, Alex would like to jump in for just a moment and, and say hey. It's been a while since she's chatted, so I want to give her an opportunity to say hello. Hello. Lovely. I am Alex. sending you much love, much blessings, uh, much kisses. I'm doing good. I want to thank uh, you for your love, your inspiration. You're so welcome. Yes, I have visited with you, Alex. We I shared know. some <laughs> moments. Yes. Energy and, and you and Dakar and Jim, Kim, yep. everybody has been very inspirational to me. And, and when I get down and sad, I just think of you guys' wise wisdom and words of advice and much love. And I'm just holding on to that. And I just want to say thank you. I love you very, very, very much. You are very welcome, Alex. We hold you close to our hearts. Please know that. I do. Much blessings to you. Thank you. Alma Talk, I have one more question, and then I'd like to uh, give Roxanne an opportunity to come. And this question comes from uh, our friend Shin in uh, Tokyo. And he starts the question with, um, he heard that he's had many lifetime connections with his family members, with the exception of his father, and that the father is here for in this incarnation for the first time, and he's having a hard time understanding him. It's not he doesn't have anything against him; he's just very hard to understand. And he's wondering if you, if you can tap in, could you please tell him what the reason is for the connection in this lifetime? What's the reason for him to be uh, his dad, and what is he supposed to learn from him? Yes, it is right there in what you just expressed to me. His curiosity about his father, his understanding that his representation is one of a first incarnation. If this experience had not occurred in his life, he may never have made this question. He may never have formed the idea that it needed to be addressed. Now, this is part of his lesson Aaron. He came into this lifetime with the agreement that this being would be his father. So the father, in effect, has come through and he is a very, expect, a very effective spiritual guide. For now, she is reaching out further to understand the relationship that he has with this being. Do you see? This is how lessonary works in many ways. A father that he finds mysterious, 
so he looks to the spirit realm, to other ideas, to understand him. What a wonderful way to grow in your spiritual idea. Yes, please, I encourage him. Remain interested in understanding him. For it will take him to places and ideas and understandings that will grow him and elevate him. And his father will have done his job. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Alma Talk, um, before, before you um, step away, is there anything else that you'd like to, uh, to share with the members and, and the folks on YouTube mm -hmm. and uh, the general public? Yeah. Um, anything you'd like to, to share with everybody? Yes, there is something. At this point in time, amongst those of you who are awakened, amongst those of you who do bring a collective of vast information to share amongst each other, and each of you choose what you resonate with and what you don't. Ideal. It is perfect. You are sharing greatness amongst each other. Now, I would like you to look outside of your group. I would like you to spend some time considering those on your planet who simply do not have enough food to survive. Now, I'm asking you to do this because I wish for you to unify. I wish for you to come together and do something great. Utilize the greatness. Utilize what you have learned. Utilize what it is you use every day, the tools that you now have mastered. And reach out to parts of your earth where your assistance is required. Now may we start with the idea of those on your planet who simply do not have the food to sustain life. You have come to a point where there is repetition. And yes, this is appropriate. But I ask you, start to look beyond yourselves. Look at issues on your planet. You address the weather. Yes, this is wonderful. You address Mother Earth. Yes, she is blessed and grateful. Please, address those humans on your planet who simply are not able to eat. Their lives are times of suffering. And yes, they have chosen that for themselves. Understand this idea. Has it happened in such vastness with so many, so much loss of life that had to occur for groups such as yours for humanity who do have enough food to consume to maintain life? For you to appreciate that you have the food that you do, that you have the technology that you do, that you have the wisdom that you do, that you have the knowledge that you do. I'm asking you, take your greatness, gel together, meld, take that and make your world a better place. Imagine, imagine your group creating a healing, such suffering on your planet of your fellow humans. Imagine the planet Earth where all have enough to sustain life. Can you imagine the greatness of that? I will leave you with that idea. Thank you all very much. I appreciate spending your time with me today. Thank you, Alma Talk, as always. Blessings to you. We Thank see you, Alma you Talk. Again soon. Thank you. Beautiful message. Thank you very much.
There she is. Welcome back, Kim. Hi, Kim. Welcome back, darling. Have you drink? <laughs> Have you drink? It's been a Thank little you. bit. Yes. <laughs> How's everyone? Okay. <laughs> wonderful here. Oh, wonderful. Very wonderful. Thank you so much, Kim. Oh, you're welcome. You're very, very welcome. <laughs> I must be not accidentally mute, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> craziness. Oh, yes, thank you, Kim. That was wonderful. Lots of really good, deep information today. I hope there was something for everybody there. If, uh, if they need uh, more information, uh, you can reach Kim for a private session. Uh, I've left the links on the Google Plus uh, events page. Um, her links can be found on the uh, humancolony.org uh, uh, site as well. So I'd like to get that out there. Yeah, there's a link yeah. there that just says Yeah, well, I've put the yeah. link on the uh, Google Plus events page, and Kim's also having a 25% off special for the month of August. So there's a couple more it's weeks. So uh, <laughs> what's that? It's my birthday. That's why. It's, oh, you're giving me <laughs> this kind of for your birthday. Oh, it's August is your birthday yeah. month. Awesome. And thank <laughs> you so much, Kim. Thank you. Oh, uh, shout out to Gabe. It's his birthday, too. Oh, it's Gabe's Gabriel's birthday. birthday today. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, that's right. Shout out to Gabriel. Happy Gabriel, happy birthday. <laughs> happy Incarnation Day. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Popping in and popping out. All right. Roxanne, how are you? You doing okay? Hi, everyone. Yes, I'm doing wonderful. That was so awesome. Kim, I'm going to talk always rocks my world. Love it. Thank you once again. Bless you, Roxy. Thank you. So yes, I'm here. I'm ready. All right, go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and I, I didn't have the uh, the mm -hmm. presentation set on Kim. It was bouncing around, but I got you set on presentation. So let's let's give this a go. And uh, who are you bringing, Osipius today, or? Yes. Well, Osipius yeah. always starts, but who knows what comes after okay. that? Okay. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's a potluck <laughs> after that. Okay. It's a All potluck. Right. It's a crapshoot. <laughs> yes. All right. Whenever, All right, guys. You're ready. You are ready. Yes. Oh, I am ready. Good job. And greetings to the collective. This is Osipius from the Oversoul Collective Fire. I bid you a good day. A most impressive idealized interaction. Go ahead, Dan. Thank you. Oh, I just wanted to say greetings, Osipius. Welcome. Welcome mm -hmm. to the Human Anyone Saturday webinar. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. It's always good to be what you call in this vibration. And the idea of that of Alma Talk and channel through the entity, which you would understand that of Kim. Epic information. Do not discount this. Realize, entities, there is always a frequency of what you call a band of information. That band of information is, let's say, distorted within your own frequency of questions. And what I mean by this, if you are out of transient information or in transient information. What we mean by this is transient information is what you would understand. It doesn't make a difference in 100 years from now. 100 years may be a long time from now for you. But it is usually information that of candy, hmm? that of idealized uh, conspiracy theories in the background of what's going to happen or this or that. And if you understand the frequency band that is narrowed in the idea of self-evolution, then you have, say, spot on understand the fractions of that of Amitabh. It is her idea, hmm? we know her as that vibration, in the idea of self-evolution. This journey is not to have a whole bunch of information about the price of fish in China. 
What is truly going on here is your self-evolution in that you represent only that of higher resonations of light to offer that of your lost children, your brethren, your fathers, your mothers, your sisters, your neighbors, a remembrance of themselves that they had forgotten. You have woken up. You are now a light worker, are you not? Therefore, a light worker has a resident stance, if you will. That stance takes, let's say, a foothold in 3D physical realm as love. It may be in a different frequency band among other ones, but we're not here to compare. We're just using the blanket idea of you're awake. So in that you beam out light, hmm? that light is self-evolution, revolution, realization, offering more love. This is Amatok's intention. The words that you can go back and listen to will be that of self. In the questions, she idealized, look into yourself. Hmm? Be one and intimate with the love of yourself. You're the honored God here. Hmm? It is not the idea of the outside world. The outside world is a reflection of the inner God. You. That's who you honor. That's who you love. That's who you seek. That's your understanding. You're born in the idea of a matrix of a mind of separation. How wonderful. What a choice. Epic. Truly. To come in here and birth an idea from nothingness using only the coveting ideas of what's around you to build your own status of yourself. To build the idea of a personality. And then after all your hard work through your thousands and thousands of lifetimes, one day you wake up and say, shit, that's not me. Most epic journey. But don't look at that as in frustration and you have to do the work to become not you. Look at in the joy of the self-love that awaits you, the realization of the God that you are. Shift your awareness. Many messages from Avatar were just that. Where are you focusing your idea? In the idea of the human colonies, don't look at the negative idea of it's in chaos. Look at the positive idea on what can be potentiated from all the catalysts about you. And the catalyst is not for the idea of how it's going to turn out for the human colonies. It is how it's going to turn out for you. Because the more love you be, the more ability you are, that of the encompassing God here upon earth. And that encompassing God here upon earth only resonates the beam of love once again to those who need shepherding in. To safe harbor within their own self-love that they have neglected. Because they don't understand it's even there. They think life is that of the construct they have built. Hmm? Many times in your 3D reality, you have look, looked upon another before you woke up hmm? and said, look at that person. That's their personality. That's who they are. Mm -mm. They are love. That is the personality of the built construct of illusion. Walking around in the idea of this mannequin being energized, what you call a physical vessel. But that is the idea that was built, and that is the idea you're deconstructing. How wonderful that is. So the focus of your reality is, <clears throat> what is this catalyst, and what did it have to do with me? It's not to be projected back out upon another. There's nothing in your reality, if you would choose to understand this, that is not coalescing with you for an idea of expansion. It may be in a resonant, in, let's say, a resident immediacy to reject it. But the master takes every idea that comes into this reality and, let's say, ponders, questions, relates hmm, to the self and understanding. There is much pride to be swallowed in this idea because it hurts in many ideas. Many ideas of regrets from the past as well as victim ideas of yourself allowing things to happen to you. But you are allowing others to explore themselves by the beauty of you in that, let's say, idea of being a victim. Mm -hmm. But now you know you choose not to be the victim and you're not obligated to it. You are now loving yourself and now you have an infinite number of realities over here to explore. The idea of repetition is that of you not letting go of your own identity. Identity in and of itself is that what keeps you at peace because you know who you are. But as you deconstruct who you think you were, then you realize who you are. And then you can balance the two and take away and add and take away and add to become more of the encompassing idea of the forgotten God that you all are. So understand this. Review what you would call this channel. 
for there is much idea decisiveness in there for self-exploration, -explor self-expansion, and most certainly self-love. In the idea that of Jane, hmm? in, let's say, in Doctrine 5, to know thyself. Really understand that kingdom of heaven lies within. This is not a joke. This is not something to be discounted. You are the projector. Where is it projecting from? The other side. You project through. Who's the light that is projecting through to give you this illusion upon the screen? Hmm? You. So search that idea. And most, in, let's say, encourage the idea to others to look within. Do not offer this in the idea in interactions of preaching, because then you will most certainly divide that much more solid. For the idea of preaching, being told what to do, hmm? idealized is, let's say, diminishing. No one wants to go to that play anymore of being preached to. But you offer ideas of inspiration, of pondering thoughts. And those all, all those rather, ideas lie within the moment. They are not to be thought of in, let's say, in anticipation of an interaction in time. Because that moment and the other moment are two different space-time nouns. Be in the moment and allow the knowledge to come through the perfect words to offer another person an idea of themselves that they have not seen before. And those words are, let's say, co-created in the moment. And the other higher self that says, this is the perfect words. Please say these. And they do. You do. And that offering now is upon that for, as Alma Tuck said, choice. Now let's discuss the idea of one's not choosing. Are you slighted by this? If they don't agree with you, what you have said, are you, let's say, contortioned inside? Are you saying to yourself, why don't they believe me? Hmm? So let's look at that for one second, and this is another, let's say, core belief system. It is not needed. You need another one's approval, is it? For that is lack of self-love. You do not need to be validated in any way, shape, or form of your words by another, for that is lack of self-love. When you are full wisdom with yourself, fully in love with yourself, then the opinion of another matters not, truly. And if you do feel slighted in the mirror of a other, let's say, not believing you, please rejoice, for this is a catalyst. It has served you well in the realization that you, at this time, have a whole in portions of your idealized whole being. That whole will now be dealt with by you filling it with your own love, going inside and letting go of the egoic separations of need for another's approval of your own choosing. And now you can coalesce those ideas with your wisdom, filling that whole and becoming that much brighter, beaming a little bit farther, and those that are seeking truly hmm, will see your light. Don't think physically. Use that idea of your alternate eye. Hmm? And you are out there and you feel those ideas on the outskirts of your reality. Do not seek them. They will come to you because you are beaming what everyone forgot, love. And it all starts with within. And they come into your reality and you offer the simple, simple, perfect words of wisdom in the moment. And do not run off at the mouth and try to get them to believe once again. Don't show anyone this is the right way for once again you are a religious dogma. There is no right way. Everyone is on their separating idea of their own expansion of themselves journey. Always understand this, every action upon every space-time now in all the worlds, in every, every portion of creation is expansion, is spirituality, is the creator realizing, let's say, reinforcing and furthering itself in its own understanding. Hmm? Every action is expansion of all that is. It is only the distortions within the construct you say that's not relevant. Bullshit. Everything is relevant. Everything works. If it is in the idealized, conceptualized, and what you call a negative idea, then most certainly that is always an offering of healing 
It is never to be looked at that's negative. And then you only fortify the reinforcement of that being negative. That negativity only slows that of humanity's own understanding of themselves. You are here to heal the idea of what you would call the illusion by loving it. It is the most simple idea. But loving everything is a tough one because you're going through thousands upon thousands times 10 to the fourth DNA embedded belief systems of separation that you're going through to heal. This is the frequency band we speak of as well. How do you heal yourself to heal others? In the idea of what you would call a healer, the healer is not healing. Oh, no. If the healer is saying that I'm doing it, then the healing is haphazard. The healing is, let's say, not fully understood. You hold the position, if you will, for infinite intelligence to come in to heal the other, offering the other their own belief systems of their, let's say, self to coalesce with themselves. And that idea needing of healing patient if you will needs the idea of healing accepts the idea of healing believes in the idea of said healer doctor physician reiki you does not matter and you get out of your own way in the egoic construct of separation that i am this identifying you as a separatist in his idea think about it and then you allow infinite intelligence to flow through you in the purest idea of form Going back to the idea of question of purity, what is it? It is truly letting undistorted frequencies of the purple ray to come through infinite intelligence and allow that. Healing is one modality how that happens. You are the healer upon the idea of 3D conception, but the construct of the mind says, I am not healing. I'm allowing the healing to come through me. Much like Roxy is not channeling, she is out of her way, letting the energies flow through her. Hmm? And the idea of separation, you give her name the channeler, but she does not boast and idealizes. And much with you in your own identifications, each and every one of you have defined something about you as this or that. Be the mutable idea of always being whatever the hell you are in the moment, because that is the freedom. Because then you can't confine yourself because you defined yourself. Hmm? So when you don't define yourself in the moment and be the simplistic, naked, vulnerable idea to the universe, can't everything that with the possibility of your frequency band now be realized by you? Oh, most certainly. And within every one of those ideas is an expansion of self, furthering the idea of the creator, you. The creator is experiencing you through you right now. Therefore, you are the creator. You are source. You are all that is. So look at this as a joyous ride of venturing into the unknown, and then you will shed quickly because you're not focused on it. Ideas of confinement. And in that, you will be what you would call the highest light being possible in every now. And that is your journey to experience how much love can you give yourself to experience. This rocks. This is all we have, and the question idea is up next. If anyone has a question, we are, let's say, open. Thank you, Cynthias. This is Sarah. Yes. I have a number of My questions. My half-word friend. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Booyah. Um, I have a number of questions from uh, three members. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the first member is Liney, mm -hmm. and she would like to know... Uh, who are the aliens that were speaking to her on Tuesday night? Andromedans. You want us to elaborate? Yes, please. I think she oh, would like that. <laughs> most certainly. All right. The Andromedan Idea Council, you have a fractalized oversoul that was within, birthed within that idea of that physical, which you would understand spiritual, physical incarnation of the Andromedan species. Your oversoul is connected very deeply with them. You interact with them because yourself is giving what you would call direct information on what it is to be what you would call a separated human in your dream state, which is true, your waking state. So you're up there with the Andromedan Council saying, hey, this is what we're going through right now from the perspective. You as a fractal forgotten self don't know you're doing it, but that's what's going on. So in that fashion, you are visiting with your other selves of your oversoul 
collective that is incarnated in the idea of the Andromedan civilization, epic civilization, by the way. And in that idea, you are coalescing your experiences upon Earth through your DNA imprinted memory brought up, if you will, to that dimension. So they can experience, download onto their interactive idea with themselves and see what would be beneficial for the council to bring to the council of Saturn, if you will, to bring the next idea of coalesced ideas, which means experience, ideas of what you would call the next adventure of speaking, let's say giving, catalyst of offering to that of humanity in whatever way, shape or form it is all understood with the entire Saturn council. So there you go on now. <clears throat> Thank cool, you very huh? much for that. Sure. The next question is from mm -hmm. Harris. Harris, uh, yes. how's the baby? <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Mm. I'm yeah. speaking. Go ahead. He would like to ask about uh, the pyramid, the pilgrimage to Ireland. I had a thought after watching a video that I should go to Ireland, and I. Should should plan a trip mm -hmm. uh, with some people from Hukalo and maybe others to go to Ireland to walk the land. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted to know uh, those who is is but is that something that is viable or probable? Oh, of, course. of course, everything is viable. Everything is probable. Once again, it is your own resonance towards that, seeking that, being that, with not worrying about how many are going to show up or actually do it. If it is your venture, then go. Hmm? All you yes. have to do is look at Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump started running alone, and then all of a sudden, with people with didn't understand, just start following it. They will come to the vibrational intention of you that is encoded in the reality matrix. That venture will start out with you, which it has, and there will others, let's say, be signed up, if you will, before you actually take your first step upon this journey. What will happen is more will gather as you are going because your intention is sweeping across, A, the magnetic lines, the ley lines, if you will, always beaming intention because the intention is that of love. Wherever love is present upon any parts of the earth, it is always vibrated out in what you call the physical realm, sending the signal out, hey, here's a new radio station, let's tune in. And when they tune in, they get the download subconsciously, and whether it bursts itself into the conscious mind matters not, it's the intention behind it for the opportunity of that individualized idea to feel that intention of another, this in that case being Harris, with his intention on his pilgrimage to that of Ireland. It is most certainly possible, of course. It is probable, of course. <clears throat> now, which one are you choosing? Probability is haphazard in some ways. Possible is, let's say, haphazard in other ways. What is your intention, belief, love behind it that takes it from a possibility to a high probability? Is up to you. I believe in it, most certainly. I encourage any idea, because if you look around humanity, everything you see was an idea before it was actually birthed. So once again, the idea is, let's say, in play, it has been noticed, it has been potentiated, it has been accepted, and now it is being acted upon. So Harris, continue with your love, fear nothing back home, have nothing in the idea of what is going to happen in my absence. Don't worry about the outcome, because that is only projecting from what you already know. And yes, what we know, we don't need to know. I'm sorry to break you off. This is a co-creation from me and Harris. Um, you I, don't need I to think the thing, that, the thing that had been stalling me is I'm trying to figure a way to explain it to whoever wishes to come about why we're doing it, and I'm having this... Wait, stop, time. First off, you need to let me finish and have a little patience because I'm not done. Next okay. thing, you don't need to explain jack shit, if you will, to anybody. Because your explanation, listen very closely now, that's your validation for you wanting people to understand your point of view. Stop. They don't need to know. Because this is a compassing idea of fear. You're projecting no one's going to go unless they know what it's the intention is. It's a pilgrimage. Listen, you guys are discounting the idea. And here's the idea. The idea of thought, Okay. When you think of something, it projects because you're here in 3D. 
That thought, your pilgrimage, is a light and potent reality matrix. We have spoke of this before, that through Pali of the Essasani civilization. Oh, I'll say it right. Civilization, she likes that. <laughs> Anyways, so in that matter, you have thought, and that thought is the entire thought block. But you slow it down by saying people need to know by this matter of communication. They need to know with intention of what my intention is. This is the allowance. This is the surrender. This is you letting go and allowing the universe to work on its own. Because you are the universe, but the coalesced idea of mind of separation, what you know, says it can't work A, B, or C. It must be this way or that way. And that is, always will be, and always has been, confining, constricting to the idea. The ones that are effortless gods, have things come to them naturally, are the ones who are getting out of their own way. You don't need to idealize how to do it. Yes, we can give you idea after idea. And then when you finally find one that resonates, then you will pursue it. And yes, it will be successful in that way. But there's a quicker way. And that's where you let go and know it's already rolling. It's already moving. It's already been birthed. It's been energized. It's out there being itself. You just love the idea. Act upon it in any way you can. Not in trying to get people to sign up. Not going to be to explain, but just saying, okay, we're getting ready to go and then start viewing it and visualizing it and making your idealized plans of being there and coalescing. But things of simplicity, things of effortless, not things that confine you or constrict you or cause you discourse in your mind because that's the ego mind trying to figure out the intuition mind getting together and saying, okay, let's work this out. You don't need to work anything out because it's already done. That reality exists. Echoing that of the idea of Bashar, you always go to the parallel earth that you are vibrating to. How do you vibrate that to that earth? Love it. Love yourself. Allow it. Visualize it. And don't expect it. Make sense? Yes. Booyah. What else? Thank you very much for that. Uh, question from David. 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 Uh, he, he wants to know if uh, he's been to the colony and what has transpired there. Is David from uh, Germany? Uh, he channels Klaus. Mm. He channels who? Klaus, uh, Reptilian Collective. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Stand by. Yes. Let's let's put it this way. <clears throat> Takur is requesting, if you will, that he speak with David, speak with the idea of that of Takur on this matter of the colonies. For let's say the law of confusion is in play. What is the law of confusion in your terms? Infringement upon free will. There is a co-created reality with that of him and to occur, whether it's dream state or physically idealized in the channeling state, hmm, then you can, then he rather will choose that idea on how to connect and realize what his, can we say that? Flask. Nah, stand by. Okay. Yeah, his participation is the key word here in that of the human colonies. This is all we can say. <clears throat> Make sense? Very well, thank you. Booyah. Uh, next question is from Mary. Mary, Mary. Mary in Washington. Oh, come on, I'm singing here. <laughs> Can we not have fun in 3D? Yes. No. <laughs> Lighten up, guys. It's just another entity. All right, go. Mary would like to know, has she been to the colony and has there been any DNA exchange? And she thanks you. You're welcome. All right. In this idea, since your awareness, that of Mary, is already coalesced in the idea, accepted the idea 
of the human colonies and of what you would call DNA infusions, then that of Takar is an allowance of speaking echoing through me that idea. Yes, you have, and yes, you are. Make sense? Yes. She knows it. She just hasn't accepted it. Mary accepted. And then, Kainakuma, yeah. And then it will go from there. Remember, back to Alma Talk, guys. Don't forget this. This is about self revolution. You know that you are on the colonies. You know that you have the DNA idea. And whatever that idea within the human colony says about the DNA is your reality. Accept it and let that flourish so you, Mary, can expand. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the next question mm. is from Ruth. Uh, she asks, she would like to know if you, Osiphius, or the entity who is channeling through Roxy, is mm. he and his collective still dealing with essential issues to get to the next level of being and dimensions, and if so, what specific challenges or issues are those? All right. Very much so, we as the Oversoul Collective Fire are what you would call. All right. Gagnon, <clears throat> what time do we have? We have 11.47, so 20 minutes. All right. And this our idea, from our perspective, it does not have to be you. Listen closely. We are going to echo that of Ra, and Ra, the Oversoul Collective, is our what you call good friend. We are experienced the same idea. What you would understand, our Oversoul, the Oversoul Collective Fire, and that of being Roxanne's as well, is what you would call the, yes, seventh density, okay? This is an idea. We're going to, let's say, reconfirm something with you in your mind that you are aware of, maybe not consciously. This idea, experience you're having, is an octavia of densities, one through eight. One being that of photon light. Mm -hmm. Understanding the physical idea of being a molecule, an atom, a neuron, not a neuron, rather, neutron, that kind of. The second idea, second density, you understand that already, plant, animal, mineral, blah, blah, blah. Third, being self-aware, human. Fourth, idea being love, light. And fifth, an idea of knowledge and wisdom. Sixth density, and let's say compassion and acceptance of understanding on how to be the teacher learner. And then the seventh idea, coalescing and focusing upon becoming coalesced once again, going home completely to all that is. That is your journey within this Octavia of this density. I am always expanding through all of my fractalized self. The Oversoul Collective is expanding through me and all of my selves and all of Roxy's selves and down and down and down, as well as all the other Oversoul Collective fractalized and the Oversoul and the Oversoul and the Oversoul. So we in this seventh density idea are, let's say, preparing to move forward into the coalescing and start our journey upon another plane or do whatever we choose to do. And that next idea. Each of you are doing the same thing. Each of you are understanding yourself. I am moving up as well as my fractals who are in fourth and fifth and sixth, as well as Roxy's fractal, she's in third, will go to fourth and be there for about, I don't know, 90,000 years per lifespan. So let's say 30, 35 million years. She'll be in the fourth density, understanding that of love light in the individual perspective to understand fully seeing encompassing so she can be the idea of what you would call the next fifth density being and that fifth density being she will start to what you call create an oversoul of herself mm -hmm. be an oversoul within that density and stay here until she is fully coalesced the idea into the eighth density and zip off into her own own idea after we become what you would call eighth density idea, the Oversoul Collective Fire, we will depart and do our idea maybe within this galaxy. And I don't mean that galaxy you understand as the spiral. I'm talking about 100 million galaxies is what you would understand is, let's say, this Octavia idea. 
When that ends, Roxy will stay most certainly within this Octavia of densities until she is finished and then choose herself to be that of her next adventure as an oversoul when she finishes this, let's say, expansion period she has chosen to journey upon. Now, <clears throat> in that idea, the question in simplicity, everybody in every space-time now, every entity, every idea is always expanded. What we experience is our ideas of ourselves of the multiple expansions of experience. What is challenging to us is the idea of the, let's say, negative entities that were within the construct of what you would call this galaxy, hmm? this major galaxy, if you will, that gives us the experience of negative energy, which we still coalesce understanding and offer the love to the MTV experiencing that in the directed contact with what you would call the polarity idea of forgetfulness, mm -hmm. that of fear. Now remember, it is not every galaxy has the same idea to the same level of what you call the veil. It is all very unique to the each individual, what you call logos. The logos of this, let's say, solar system is your sun. That idea chose this idea, which is actually comes from the larger idea of the separation of, of let's say, the oversoul of what you call your son. That's the game that's in play. So it is all different levels of, let's say, understanding, expanding, being, learning. Mm -hmm. And we experiencing challenge through our other selves, the challenges of what you call separative ideas, negative ideas. And there are also challenges of becoming beyond ourselves with full potentiality of your full love. For the universe is the biggest mystery. Everything, let's say, the source is the biggest mystery and it is most exciting to venture into the unknown and expand yourself. We don't know everything. We learn it, if you will. Mm -hmm. But there are other portions that have learned it, and we use them as guides as well. And they help us journey as well as you are journeying. We are helping you. So it is all a symbiotic idea relationship that never ends. It is always constant experience of expansion of the individual I am that each and every one of you are that you see in the mirror every day. So once again, fall in love with that image. Fall in love with that beauty that you see before you. Honor the God within and rock and roll with your reality. Make sense? Sarah? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Yes, that Whoa. makes sense. Sorry, I came back out. Oh. <laughs> Going back in. Okay. <laughs> Look at the smiles on Mark and Pearl. <laughs> Those smiles may be permanent. All right. <laughs> They're so beautiful. All right, we're back. What's up? <clears throat> yes, we have more questions. We have more answers. Look at that! <laughs> now that's the co-creation there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Roxy's laughing. Um, Pardon me. We have a question from Bijan. He would like to know if he has any hybrid children. Reference the name again. B. John, B. I. J. A. N. B. John. Mm, yes, yes, yes. We're familiar. Stand by. Mm, space slut. Mm. Many children, in other words. It's a joke. Relax. The idea of that is a female idea up there in one of the densities, but there's also male ideas down here as well. Oz of probable selves. Please don't confine yourself to one idea on Earth. You have many selves. Truly. Let's say 15 hybrids. <clears throat> The Zephyr civilization, two hybrids within the Essasani civilization, future human idea, fractalized ideas between what you call Gamiya Koko Nia, Shambhariya Kaukura. There is what you would call a human species that is yet to be discovered. It is a very close representation of what you would understand as the human you see before you. But there are different attributes of physical abilities, and we have chosen to explore that because of the hybridization between that of your Arturian idea being the coalescence between that of the Zetas and humanity. 
that was their idea, the Arcturian's idea, and they splintered off a DNA fractal, which is separate, not known to you, a couple hundred, two, three hundred years in the future, you will remember this or will really truly discover it in your mind, this new idea human, that is some of your children over there. You have several, truly. How to contact them? Yeah, is your question. Um, Wait, not stand by. In the idea of the Essasani, you think of blue. Call to your children. In the idea of what you called your Zephyr civilization, that is what you called an insectoid human idea. You can look at the color green, that of forest. Call your children. They know your name. Everyone knows who everyone is. It's just you to think they need you to know it in a particular way. Let go of that. And then your future ideas of that new human offspring, that will be revealed to you in a dream state. Cool. Next. Sarah? Yes, Alexandra is next. She's here. Hi, baby. Hi. How are you? I'm so happy to talk to you. I love you beyond measures. I love you. There is no measure. It's unconditional. How beautiful. <laughs> so you know, there's just no limit to my love. Um, my question is this. Mm. I have been... Um, there, there's many beings that they are from different uh, galaxies that they come to me. And when I go to meditation, it's clear as I'm going in. But then, let's say I come back within three hours of our time. Mm -hmm. Maybe it, I thought it'd be like maybe five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And I show up, and then I can't remember all the details. Mm -hmm. um, and there is one particular being that his I asked for his name. He said it was uh, Horus, but he doesn't look alien. He looks half human, half something else. Um, can you kind of explain why my having I'm um, not able to remember all of it of what happens within that time frame? Yes, <clears throat> there are let's say experiences that do not matter in the idea of knowing at your time of waking up from this idea experience. In other words, you are let's say out of meditation state and you're starting to remember. There are some portions of those experiences that would not let's say be beneficial to you to remember for it would offshoot you into another reality that you couldn't quite get yet. That will come in what you call an appointment with the perfect now. You always make your appointments once again when you just try to get don't you don't try to get to the appointment. You let it come in its natural now, natural state. So in that idea you are, let's say, closing off that portion of that re reality so you don't remember it, and then giving you the opportunity to, let's say, ponder, dissect the remembrance of particular interactions with these different idea races you're experiencing through thousands of different galaxies, of your interconnected into your, let's say, several thousand la lifetimes. Mm, yes, yes. Okay, and in those ideas you are, let's say, connecting because you have what you call mastered an idea of meditation. Your own individual way was your perfect idea to do this, and in that you have easement and you allow, and that was birthed from your, let's say, blueprint that you encompassed to give you this ability, which was still a probability to get to, but you chose it, so booyah. So in that idea you can have that interaction you're having with these beings. Now this idea that human that looks human is let's say definitely a Pleiadian friend of yours. There are many representations of Pleiadians that come to. Make no mistake about it humanity, Pleiadians are everywhere. They're a very 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 large interactive part of this community of what you call humanity. They've been here for a very long time and they love you and they're here to help. So in that idea, don't define them as Pleiadian and they service in such a manner. No, they have an infinite number of ways they are servicing humanity through the billions of times they've, let's say, co-created with you guys. So in that fashion, this entity, you understand, is a male figure 
in what you would call Cameo. Yeah. yeah. Ninth yeah. density. Yes. Ninth density idea of a Pleiadian friend, if you will. One that will hold your hand <clears throat> in your journeys. There to be accepted. But your pondering mind wants to know why are you here? Listen, when you guys can be more innocent, you get more interaction, truly. Because when you co co create an idea of intention, why are you here? What's going on? You're seeking that of knowledge of egoic filling. The knowledge is presented in the moment. So what you do with this idea is next time you realize you're with him, please hold your hand out and let him take it, and he will venture off into a new world with you. For you are naked to that, and that nakedness is trust. Oh, yes. That trust allows that expansion because you are being the idea of coalesced love. Make sense? <laughs> yeah. So just give my hand and then hopefully I'll remember when I come back to see where I went. <laughs> yes, those remembrances will become more and more vibrational allowances to remember as you remember your own self. Don't worry about what you're going to get. Focus on what you did get to get more of what you're going to get. Make sense? And how does that would help in this uh, 3D reality? Say again? How does uh, when we connect in that manner, how does that reflect or help in the 3D reality? Whatever lies within that connection, that is a lesson for you. In the idea of Arma talk, your lessonary ideas that you have offered. It doesn't need to be a tangible idea to show or give or have a solid ground to move upon. You can let go of things that look tangible and solid as movement of your own ascension and trust that every moment is an available idea of ascension. Mm -hmm. And whatever experience you're having is the highest, best, most beneficial idea of yourself to expand from yourself. Nobody else. It is you that are running your show. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Sure does. Thank you so, so much. So trust that. I love you. I love you. Booyah. Hello, Mosefius. We have five more people, and we're going to call it a day. <laughs> okay. Is it time? Uh, these have to be the last questions. Okay, Wendy. Her question is... Uh, she Wendy, who? Yes, no, Wendy Wolf. Speak up. Wendy Wolf. Okay. Yes, uh, yes, we know. She would like to know um, about today's date, the Lionsgate portal. She would like your perspective on it, the Lionsgate Sirius portal, and also mm -hmm. if there are any messages uh, for her regarding her galactic languages. All right. First off, the idea of the mm, presented idea from Talk on the 888 is the infinite idea of expansion that's within that frequency band. To shift over the idea, that's all on the 888. You don't need much understanding of that. Truly, the idea of the Lion's Gate was a triggering effect from the 888 to get your awareness of the Lion's Gate portal through Sirius. Listen, Sirius is going to move on to the sixth density, that entire collective after humanity is ready to move into what you call the fourth density, allowing the Essasani to become the top of the triangle in the fifth density. We have spoken of this before. So that is their energy pushing through to give, let's say, amplifiers to what you would call your own self-love within this frequency band, much as the ship from the Essasani, the lower it gets in its portals, pumps what you would call energy of love, positive energy, into the physical realm. It is just love that idea that is now being what you would call again reinforced of what you call the Syrian nation and they are up there doing their idea mm -hmm. and that's what the lion's gate is truly all about now there's also individual perspective that is resonating is once again for something you to understand allow ponder and let it unfold we are not going to teach you guys how to ascend we are going to give you offerings how to ascend yourself through your own realization. That's the journey. Otherwise, it would have been over a million years ago if we were to just give you the answers. Make sense? Yes. yes, it makes sense. Yes, yes. 
Now, the galactic languages, what was your question on that? She would like to know if there's any messages for her regarding her galactic languages, her usage of it. Let me check her inbox. <laughs> In the idea of one particular galactic language, and we will not, let's say, mention the language in and of itself, for it is one you are speaking in your mind. You have birthed it a few times through your physical idea. First, you coalesced or, you know, accepted the idea of what particular language is that you were speaking now. But the other one that you know that's in there is what you would call a channeled idea avenue for you. In other words, you'll get this language because you know this language. That language will connect you with that civilization. That civilization is waiting to come through. They are what you would call the civilization of a Kume civilization. That language is a universal language spoken by the Akume and many others. You will discover the name of this language, how to speak it, and then talk to the Akume through this avenue and choose to be a channeler of the Akume civilization. Roxy channels them every now and again too, but there are others that are birthing, birthing this idea of civilization to come through. So that is your venture with this particular galactic language that is in the background calling you, saying, come and speak to me. Trust it. Don't worry about the translations. Let them come. When they come in your mind, trust that those are the words starting out with automatic writing and then seeing it, reading it, and going, holy shit, that's real. Cool. You got that in your system. Now you know it's real. Then you move on. Speak to the Akume through this universal language. <coughs> For the Akume have what you would call not used a physical idea of a language in a very long time. They are only telepathic. They just put out thought blocks and let people choose or not. They don't like disseminate into particular idea of languages, that being of a galactic. They are thought blockers. Boom, get it or not, doesn't matter to them. So in that fashion, they have interactions with humanity that is to be realized by different particular channels. This is your way, because your love for galactic languages is now in play, and that love for galactic languages allowed you to offer, let's say your higher self offering to the fractal of yourself, the idea of speaking this new language, which is not new in the idea of humanity. There are others that speak it, but it is a, let's say, name that we will not give you because your higher self wants you to discover it. And in that, you will start speaking to the Yakume. And in that, then your choice is to channel their information in whatever way you can. Automatic writing, blogging, or becoming a channel or translation channel, or a, let's say, get it into your mind and channel it as a conscious channel in what you would call a acceptable language, that of English, probably, to that of the human collective. Booyah. And message. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she enjoyed that immensely. Sure. Uh, the next question is from Barbara. Mm -hmm. She was here earlier in the group. Uh, mm -hmm. She would like to know about if she have any hybrid children and anything you can tell her about them. Much love and blessings. Much love. That of, let's say, Takur just jumped in, in that idea, and we can give you three hybrid children. Beyond that, it would be the law of confusion. So <laughs> that's, you understand. Hmm, make sense? Yes. <clears throat> Booyah. <laughs> okay, very well. Next we have up uh, is Felipe. And his, Felipe. His question is, uh, if there are any messages from his spirit guides or galactic family and he wants to know if there is any way his friend Caitlin can heal from her soft tissue back problem that doctors haven't been able to find any, anything to help her and she is experiencing chronic pain. All right. The idea, Felipe, is you're the healer. That's the message. That whole moment is now in your reality. You can heal your idea of friend Caitlin with your soft tissue ideas of the back problem. Of course. How? By being the energy that you know you already are to offer the healing. You have wanted to heal, but you're afraid to heal. This is not about her. This is about you. Don't worry about her and her chronic pain. 
You are not there to rescue her and solve her problems. That is her journey, her individual reality to heal herself through encouraging you to heal her. Hmm? Oh, yes. So in that idea, you have a healing modality within you. <clears throat> That is much what you would call the idea of tone healing, not equated to, let's say, the full circumferencing idea of Hathors and toning, but in tone healing, offering what you call a physical idea of a sound machine that can be placed in the area along, coupled with, if you will, that of what you call your own energetic flow of energy, allowing it to flow through you, in other words, to take this idea and straighten that misalignment. Whenever you heal in such manners of decrepit idea, chronic idea, cancerous ideas, something that is, let's say, deep core, pain-filled reality, you're always going to go back to the stem cells and rebirth them in the moment. Don't think for one second that this body is the same one a second ago, a second ago, a second ago. It's all brand new bodies. You only perceive them as your belief system says to. Period. So that healing through the idea of modality you've given yourself, your tool, is to heal the etheric body into the physical, etheric into the physical, etheric into the physical, and it heals in time. Because you are creating your body over and over and over again. So you heal the etheric body first, but the mindset feels that it's happening in 3D physicality, so it does it in that tool, that fashion. And your energy only, let's say, enhances that etheric body to the physical realm and give the idea, new stem cells, a chance, if you will, to reformulate themselves to the original idea of its construct. So your message, your idea, Felipe, is to allow yourself to become what you know you are. You're fearing. Why? Because of acceptance. Yes. You're fearing. Why? Because you might get it wrong. Yes. But I dare say you're the God. You're the individual I am. This is a catalyst once again for you. Me and you are having this conversation and I didn't write this. You did. So your higher self is telling you right now that you can be this. All you have to do is choose it. And you won't fail. Fail is first attempt in learning. You are evolving. You're not going to get it wrong. You are going to hone your skill. Choose if you will. We would, uh, let's say, like to see that. Because it's epic ideas for you. Booyah. Wonderful. You Wonderful. The next person is Karen. She is here with us. Karen. Karen Newman. Yes. Hi, Asifias. Hi. Karen, what's happening, baby? <laughs> I have a question that's actually not for me, but for Crystal. Oh my gosh, how's the baby? The baby is fine. Crystal Wonderful. is moving into a very exciting phase in her life. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. is now following her bliss and will be working with extremely, uh, quote-unquote, mentally ill people. Perfect. And so her idea and the words that I'd like for you to give her is when she talks to them because some of them she is yes identified as definitely having chemical imbalances and, and mm -hmm. such but mm -hmm. others are, ex are experiencing multidimensionality in a yes. way that they cannot communicate it so I would like if you would for you to give uh, words to her as an inspiration as she begins her work and yes. some things to keep in mind. Thank you. Most certainly. The first idea is in, in the engagement and the discernment between the chemical imbalances and that of multidimensionality is already in play, fully understood by you. So choose, um, let's say, when you're with an entity, you know that idea if it's chemical or multidimensional. Trust that is your first idea. Do not discount your own intuition. Okay? Everyone is choosing to co-create to help everyone expand each other's. Beautiful. In the multidimensionality, here let me picture, if you will, you are, all of you visualize this, if you will, in the middle of what you call a room. Make the room a circle. And in that room, it's dark, and now we want to open these, let's say, windows and all around you. Now the light shines in. Now, the idea of the multidimensionality is the person in the middle is you, and you're going to each window to see all the different realities. 
and the physical construct mind is receiving all of those on this plane. Therefore, it happens in no time because everything is now, so it's experienced what you guys call time-space as opposed to what you're experiencing here, space-time. So in that fashion, time is happening now, so it is a mess, if you will, to this physical construct of separation. This matrix of the mind complex you understand is your 3D self. And that idea, it's receiving a mass amount of input from all of these windows. And it doesn't know where to go. Now, Crystal, how you bring them home is you, let's say, if you choose, be the brightest, most constant beam of light in that window that you are representing. There may be 10, 20, 30 different windows, but they all have a resonance of themselves of a particular reality, distorted by the mind in and of itself. The mind here, the secret to this idea universe is you have love available all the time. You can zip through, in through yourself, the core understanding of what you are, unconditional love. That's set up within this construct. So in that idea, you can pull that energy from this realm that you are in through the mind of that idea, the multidimensional self, beam through the one particular window that you are experiencing in that physical idea in front of you. That idea will beam through into the room of windows, then taking the core entity of that multidimensional self and now offering it the brightest light within the room. That bright light will get the attention and bring that closer, spend more time in awareness of being what you call a fractalized human, to where it will close some of the other windows as opportunities of potential confusion within the construct of that mind. So in that fashion, you will be only giving love Love can be represented in words, but you know the discernment, Crystal. You know you, let's say, you have this wonderful ability to speak very few words and leave, let's say, the receiver of those words with an epic, powerful message, a gift of yours, truth. So in that idea, stay within what you know you are, your wisdom you understand of yourself, and speak words, offer love through that idea. And when you have what you call the entities around you that are in what you would call a system of how it's supposed to work, offer the love and the results will beam out to those other entities in co-creation thinking that the mentally ill are lost or challenged or can't or that's not possible bullshit that everyone in that 3D realm does. But that's okay. It's bullshit for them. That's their reality. You're focused on offering as well healing modalities for other people to now start venturing into with their interactions with what you call multidimensional mental health idea human beings. So you are being spread out by yourself, love, if you will, to the others to allow them to co-create the same modality you're doing. All you've got to do is love them. And you will love them in that way. The chemical ideas, the chemical ideas is, let's say, a step in between the step. Mm -hmm. We have defined it as a chemical imbalance, and most certainly it will be. That's a different healing as opposed to the multidimensionality. The different healing in the chemical imbalance is not so much your forte in this fashion. You are, let's say, more energetically aligned with loving people and offering and bringing them back to this reality, closing down other windows so they only focus on this stuff. So in the chemical ideas, you will give, let's say, others ideas, but let's say you don't really need to focus on them fully. You offer them love. But what you will do is be a catalyst for, let's say, parents, friends, and family members, other doctors, other treat, treat let's say, healers in that fashion, <clears throat> to come up with different ways of, let's say, giving that healing. This is obscure for you. Don't, don't think deeply because I'm getting your thoughts and your future understanding of this. 
don't think that, let's say, you are not helping because it's not a tangible way of helping. What you are doing is offering ideas that are reflected through you, through their higher selves, in simple words that will coalesce with each individual that is co-creating with the idea of chemical imbalance. Is that it? Hang on. Yeah, we're good. Crystal, yes. Awesome work. Love it. Love you. Thank you so much, Asifias, and love to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank I you. All right, last question from Tumatu. Yes. He is here. That would be it for today. Thank you, everyone. Tumatu. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hello, Sifius. This is Tumatu in Pearl here. Yes. Sitting on the couch, having a good time. <laughs> smiles. <laughs> Showing us your pearlies. What are you, reptilians or something? <laughs> no, never mind. Just a joke. Go ahead. Um... <clears throat> There is a member of the Hukulo group named Ash, and uh, right. we were wondering what our connection, what our connection with Ash, is. Uh, Got it. Yeah. That's it. You want to know that, Pearl? Did you say something? No, no, no. Okay. <clears throat> All right. We'll make this as quick as possible. All right, your connection. Well, first, let me ask you guys this question. You, any of you, in uh, what Pearl or that of Tomato, do you know what a wanderer is? I'm asking. A wanderer or a traveler? Have you heard these terms no. in your spiritual ideas? No. Okay. What a wanderer is, and there's a lot of wanderers upon this plane. There are truly millions of you. Whether you want to choose to understand that, it doesn't matter. You, too, are wanderers as well as the idea of ash. A wanderer is an entity who has already experienced first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, maybe, seventh, maybe. Already did the human graduation of each density. Choosing to wander back in through the densities down and birth itself into complete forgetfulness again and in that fashion help humanity because you've been through it for the ones who haven't let's say got it quite right in their own perception no one else's rule book relax but after they come out of the entity idea incarnation death as you call it they go okay I want to go back because I want to learn this or this or this so in that idea, when that individual fractalized I am chooses to go to the fourth density, that is their idea done with the third. Hmm? Not going to come back again. You have already done this, and you are here coming back. You particularly that of, is it Mark, right? To Matu. What's your real name in that Matthew. fashion? Matthew. Say again? Uh, Matthew. Matthew, pardon me. In that idea, we're getting an M, we're just doing that. So I'm talking the fractal idea from birth in that idea. <clears throat> so in that fashion, you are a fifth density, Pearl is a sixth density, and Ash is a seventh density idea. You have wandered back in. Ash picked you guys up on the way down because you guys are spiritual families and you chose this time to co-create together to be, come together and help each other. It's not that you tangibly know it in your physical mind complex. No. What you understand is intuition. You have vibrations of remembrances. A lot, truly, of what you would call hmm, deja vu experiences. You are familiar with the scene. You're familiar with not the scene of the physical realm, but the vibrational thought of that separation moment that has, let's say, I've been through this. Many of you are wanderers. Many of you woken up because you are wanderers. Make sense? Yes. So you have picked up, let's say, your guys that are all three together, picking up each other's ideas of remembrances through vibration of love of experiences that you know each other. And then you are co-creating in the way that this idea is playing out. It's beautiful, truly. Make sense? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Uh, I think we're timed. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Say again. 
We are timed. I'd like to okay. thank you, Osipius, for coming. Do you yes, have any you, any closing words from your end? Mm. Mm. Stop it. <laughs> Roxanne's here's my joke. Stand by. No, um, in that idea, let's say if you want to get a hold of Roxy, go to Odyssey of Ascension and watch our videos. We have a lot of information we would like you guys to choose. If you use your highest desire, if not, keep going about your nows, trusting the intuition that you are, and evolve the God that you had forgotten. This is all we have for this space time now. This is, let's say, Osipius and the Oversoul Collective Fire bidding you all a good day. A donate. A donate. A donate. Thank you. Cool beans, guys. Yay. How are you? Wonderful. You need a drink, drink too, Roxy? You yeah, I got it right drink. here. I got coffee oh. and water. Oh, you got Yay. it. Two-fisted drinker. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Balance out. All right. We will end with our usual blessings. Would anyone like to give any blessings today? I How about Karen? Matt, Matt wants to say something <laughs> as well. Oh, yeah. Barry oh. would like it too. And who else? Matt? Matt. I thought Matt raised his hand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's smiling. Yes. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Is that it? Hey, Dan, do me a favor. Take me off of presenting so oh. other people that are saying can be seen. Let, let me unpresent. Stop presenting. Hey, there, there go. you go. There we are. Ladies first. You're so polite. All right. We will begin with Karen. Karen, it's on yours. Sure. Thank you. Haliara Santi Koramba, Lara Shanti Korea, Da Sala, Yakandor, Mandalia Roto, Balasa, Shatila, Yaka, Indora Mandola, Sati Korembase, Shinamaba, Yalara Sator, Ika Shanti, Balaki, Afalora Manda, Gala Sita, Kora, Pitaleria, Ia Koramanda, Lera Rasiti, Shorara Se Ofanama, Defarakasha, Ocha Li Doma, Ia Sondo, Yalapasa. <laughs> ah, si no toki sanata, to chushita konata. Ah, ah mi no to to shita kata, to 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 shita Si na ti shutuku sata na umumu hoto shikato aretaka ta shutu ata no ha ano na ama. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome and thank you. Thank you. Kirana ka ti sa tukua. Kashu to Kunu, Hasata Naka, Kia Sharan Naka, Sia to Kukuha, So Ku Shutu Hani Kia, Sa Hata Hata no Koaha, Sunna Hatu, Kia Sa Karana Kata, Kia Sa to Kuaha, Kasia Sa. Namaste. 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 All right, guys. Awesomeness. Thank Get you, everyone, there. for joining love us. You. We love you so much. And everyone out there, thank you all for joining us. Thank you yes. very much. Love you all. Thank you. Smooches to everybody. <laughs> yes. Thank you all for watching Hukalo TV, located at www.humancolony.org. 
Um, you can find uh, session information for almost everybody at Human Colony. Um, Roxy's information is posted on the Google Plus events page for this event and the YouTube uh, video for this event. Um, I'd like to put a, uh, a message here for donations. Uh, the group is run on donations. If you are able to donate, please do. That information can be found at uh, www.humancolony.org as well. I'd like to thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank all the viewers for viewing. I'd like to uh, give thanks for all the beings that came to visit and all the information that was available. And uh, thank you for coming. We'll see you all next time. And I will end the broadcast here. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Bye, Thank everyone. You.